Hey everyone, look at this beautiful mural. So even the chimney looks like the bark of a tree. And look at that. So I got a ticket at the airport in Toronto upon arrival um, because I refused to take the PCR test. Um, so they gave me a $6,255 ticket and my trial was set for 11 days after the 18 month mark. So if you have a provincial offense and um, they don't give you the trial date before the 18 month mark, um, then you can file for an 11B, which means like you have the right to be, um, to have trial um, within a reasonable time. So 11 days isn't much, uh, especially since there was, uh, you know, the scamdemic. Um, so a lot of people were telling me like, oh no, uh, like lawyers, okay? Uh, they were telling me, oh, no, uh, they're not, they're not allowing the uh, 11Bs at the moment. Like it's very difficult because of COVID and they were like gonna charge a thousand dollars and i'm like there's no way like there's no way i'm paying a thousand dollars like so i tried to figure out how to do it on my own but everybody was telling me oh it's a complicated process it's a complicated process but it's super easy i'm gonna send you the i'm gonna put the link in the description and you'll see how easy it is like i'm gonna write under which heading the instructions are so you basically have to file the 11B 20 days before your trial date, okay? Um, and you have to fax the paper, like you just write it out. And um, I'm gonna put a sample uh, letter, like basically provide the letter that I, uh, that I wrote, but I'm gonna block out the information. And um, you basically provide that letter and you fax it to two phone numbers and I'll, I'll show you, I'll write the, the instructions, okay? So you, you fax it to two phone numbers and then you, you email it to the prosecutor and to the court system and um, as, like, is it, as it's explained on the website, I'll, I'll give you the link and um, that's about it. You have to do that 20 days before your trial date but don't do it before like don't do it before the 18 month mark because if you do it before the 18 month mark they might get a little slick on you and they might um, change the date okay so you have to do it after the 18 month mark in my case like there was only 11 days and the deadline was was 20 you had to do it 20 days before so I would have had to give them like you know those eight what is it eight extra days nine extra days um, and those nine, in those nine extra days, they could have like switched over the date, right? So I actually filed my 11B late. Um, and I didn't know how to do it. So um, there was a bit of a delay. I had to go to court, um, you know, 11 days after the 18 month mark. I asked for leeway. I said, oh, I'm self-representing, I need leeway. So that leeway means you need extra time to to figure out what to do and it was the case like I really needed extra time to figure out what to do um, and I was like asking around and anyway no one really knew how to do it they're like oh it's complicated and I mean it's the simplest thing I've ever done in my life to be honest <laughs> like anyway so um, I, I followed the steps I faxed the letter um, uh, let me see how many days before I think it was nine days before my second date because the first time they ended up giving me leeway um, but they were really really hard on me so they ended up giving me leeway and then uh, I was still trying to figure out how to do it I couldn't figure it out until like nine days before my second trial so um, I'll talk about the first trial first. Um, so the prosecutor I had was like a real jerk, like really like a hardcore jerk. 
and uh, he told me uh, basically oh how ironic you're filing an 11b you're asking for time you're asking for leeway but you don't give the, the court uh, those 11 days delay right you're not understanding of that and like he was basically belittling me as well because um like i told him i um you know i refused the the pcr test and then the quarantine i had to do the quarantine I was like requested to do the quarantine and he's like oh really miss why is that why is it that you have to do quarantine so basically only um, unvaccinated people had to do quarantine so he's basically shoving it in my face right um, trying to uh, ostracize me so he wouldn't let me speak and uh, he was really rude with me I literally like he was just talking with the judge and he wouldn't let me speak and even though like i had i had no i i didn't need to really speak that much like i didn't really need to defend myself i just had to say hey i want i need leeway to file an 11b blah 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 but he like he made sure to tell the judge oh by the way um like she sent me an email requesting uh like telling me that her rights were violated and this and that i just literally copy pasted something um that uh somebody sent me and they said they got away with the ticket by just sending uh, this copy paste you know like saying that it's a violation of our rights and um you know just using the bill of rights and stuff like that but he made sure to tell the judge oh she is uh she sent me this three page long email uh about uh all these uh bill of rights challenges and this and that and he was like really pissed and like yeah he was like not letting me speak he's like um so i literally had to talk over him i know you're not supposed to do that but he was he was just shutting it down like talking so fast to make sure that like oh and uh, we're gonna close this because this and that like he didn't even give me the opportunity to speak so a real jerk, a real jerk. Um, yeah, and then basically like they try to bully you and you know, intimidate you uh, if you're trying to fight for your rights, right? Especially when it comes to COVID because like, yeah, there was so, just so much division and people have different, uh, different opinions and whatever, right? So, um, look at all the birds. So that's what happened the first time and then uh, they kept like dragging it on till the end of the day like it was 4 30 or 4 o'clock and that's the time the court finishes and they're like okay we're gonna grant you the 11b because it's uh, the end of the day and we don't have time okay anyways I'm pretty sure that was done on purpose like used as an excuse to give me um, to give me um, you know to grant me the opportunity to file the 11b but they don't necessarily have to uh accept the 11b right they could say they could say anything they want and say well uh there was court delay because of the 11b and blah 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 anyway so the whole matter has to be finished within the 18 month mark unless you postpone it yourself like if you postpone it yourself then it's your fault and you can't file the 11b um now i had asked for an early resolution um at the beginning but the first early resolution appointment was postponed due to lack of judicial resources so if if it's not postponed because of because of something you did or something you requested then like it's okay so it's their fault so like you you have to include the early resolution within like the 18 months includes the early resolution date okay so yeah in my case we did the early resolution the first time and th there was nobody there like it was lack of judicial resources then we did an early resolution the second time and uh there was i said no i'm not accepting uh, any deals or whatever and he's like okay go to court your trial uh, you'll get an email with your trial date not an email but you'll get a letter with your trial date 
So then I got a trial date 11 days after the 18 month mark and I filed the 11B. So uh, they gave me my second trial a month after. So I only had just a, like 10 days to figure out how to file the 11B. And I didn't figure it out. I, uh, I figured it out maybe f just a few days before my actual trial. Like maybe seven, a week before, maybe seven or eight days before. And so you just, I just faxed the letter quickly and I was like, oh, it's late and it's probably um, not gonna be accepted just because it's late, but it was actually accepted. So I went to uh, trial on the second date and it was a different prosecutor. So when I sent the, the, the letter to the prosecutor by email, as well as, you know, the faxes and uh, sending it to the court, um, he, he sent me an email back, okay, I received your, your request and my colleague, um, prosecutor Toasty, I don't even know how to pronounce it, T-O-S-T-E, will take over. I was like, yes! I hope she's not as bad as uh, as him, right? So I kind of got lucky because I got a I got another prosecutor and a different judge. So just because the first prosecutor or the first judge was hard on you doesn't mean you're actually gonna get the same judge and the same prosecutor the second time. Now uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, yeah, they were just like it was just a different judge and a different prosecutor. So. I um, I went to the second trial and she's like oh hello I'm like hi and she's like okay so um, I said yeah I filed for an 11b and um, they she's like okay we'll speak to the judge and I thought I would have had to like go to you know present defend myself and because they don't necessarily have to uh, give you accept the 11b you have to prepare for trial regardless okay so if they accept it then you're good to go you don't have to provide any explanations and she told the judge okay i'm requesting a withdrawal uh she didn't even say the word 11b i'm requesting a, a withdrawal for um for her and uh they granted me the withdrawal they said okay have a good day bye bye so that was it but I was listening to the people before me um, that had quarantine tickets. You can kind of get a feel for, you know, how the judges and the prosecutors feel about it. And um, yeah, like the first judge and the first prosecutor, um, well, the judge was, was letting them go at 500 and $300. Like people were just accepting, uh, you know, guilty charge. Uh, yeah, they were letting them go, uh, you know, at that, at that price, $500, uh, but no one actually uh, refused it and uh, decided to go to trial uh, that day. But the, 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 uh, the, basically the feel in the room was, was really pro-COVID measures, okay? But the second time, the judge seemed more open. And um, people were were saying, "Oh, I'm on EI, and uh, I can't pay the 500. Can you reduce the fine?" And then uh, they said, "Yeah, like a hundred dollars would be would be good." And the judge accepted uh, the tickets at a hundred dollars. And so, um, yeah, that's probably not even true. Like, you don't even have to provide any. Uh, any like evidence that you that you're on the eye or whatever right so it's pretty it's pretty okay like and everybody was saying oh i can't afford it i can't afford it a any tickets they got and the, they were all provincial offenses whether it was like radar or um just you know red running a red light or not stopping at a stop sign or whatever it was they were all provincial defenses not criminal offenses so uh, the judge was was okay. She was letting tickets go like a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, depending on people's financial situations. 
so that's like the worst case scenario I guess and um, I heard that people were did go to trial you know did decide to go all the way and some were found like guilty and they they had to pay like six thousand you know the full amount right um, yeah and but they're fighting it they're contesting it but even when you contest it you have to pay money for the transcripts and I don't know how much that is but um, yeah I'm not encouraging people to uh, you know to to do that but you know it's just worst case scenario right like um, yeah because I don't know they're just some some of these judges are so like pro COVID measures and yeah they don't really care <laughs> about how you're trying to fight it and I would use the Bill of Rights to fight it um, yeah and don't use the charter at all unless you're filing for the 11b the 11b is a charter it's part of the charter but if you're fighting like, for your rights your unalienable rights then just use the Bill of Rights um, so I'll provide um, a screenshot of my of the letter I wrote, the fax I sent, and um, what else? Yeah, the link to where you could find the information on the government's website. And yeah, the 11Bs can be filed for um, cases that go to Supreme Court as well, but the deadline is uh, 30 months. So if they don't, um, if they don't like give you the trial date before the 30 months, then you can file an 11B as well. And um, yeah, and I think it's the same in different provinces. Like, I don't know if it's 18 months in every province, but like Quebec, it's 18 months, Ontario is 18 months. And I don't know about the other provinces, but I'm pretty sure it's like across the board, you know, 18 months. Um, because it's it's part of the charter, right? So, yeah. But other than that, the charter is a piece of communist garbage. It's a piece. It's a it's a communist document, basically. Because of Section One, where the government can basically do what they want, they can violate the rights that are stated in the charter uh, if they see a reason to. So they could just say, oh, which is what's happening. They could just say, oh, well, there was a pandemic, scamdemic, and uh, we're not uh, we're not taking these rights into consideration due to the uh, due to the circumstances of the pandemic or whatever. They could say that, and they have been saying it. They've been using that as an excuse, right, to violate people's rights. So, yeah. Whereas the Bill of Rights, it's just, hey, you're not allowed. Uh, to violate my rights and that's it like there's no loophole saying oh but the section 26 allows you to violate my right uh, right your rights or citizens rights uh, you know in certain circumstances if they see fit so yeah what else what else what else um, I think that's it but like it was like eating me up. I was like, I don't want to have to like plead guilty. Like, you know, and a hundred dollars is, is better than, you know, $6,255 because yeah. And I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to plead guilty for something I didn't feel I was guilty toward. And yeah, but then at the same time, I was like, you know, a hundred bucks versus six thousand two hundred fifty-five. Um, you know, is better. And where is this money going to? Like, if you if you're found guilty of like, the six thousand two hundred fifty-five dollars, you're just feeding into their system because you're paying their salaries and you're paying the system, and uh, you're you're. You're basically uh, <laughs> providing them with financial support to continue doing what they're doing, right? So they get the they get the point. Like they get the point that we're not happy, and if you have to suck it up and and you know 
uh, take the hundred dollar guilty uh, <laughs> the guilty fine or charge then you know you have to do what you have to do but I'm not sure if I would have taken the hundred dollars I might have just sucked it up and and just go straight to trial right um, but you have to like read the room and figure out if that's what you want to do and um, yeah because there is a risk to it but yeah so it's been a good week and I'm really a weight has been lifted off my shoulders um, because it was just I don't know, it's like some people have like $25,000 worth of tickets because it's like a whole family that refused the, the tests or they refused... Yeah, most people just refuse the test. Some people refuse the uh, the app, the Arrive Can app. Uh, and they still got ticketed for, for those amounts and it was like a whole family. Um, yeah, one guy said that... Yeah, okay. So one guy said that he refused the... Uh, he refused... He couldn't do, not that he refused it, he couldn't do the, he couldn't download the Arrive Can app. He wanted to do it, um, you know, file it by paper. Um, and he said that he lost, he got his cell phone stolen. Uh, or, no, he said he lost his cell phone uh, during his trip. And that he couldn't, he couldn't download the app. And he was telling them that, Oh well, I can uh, I can do it by paper, and like everyone knew that you couldn't do it by paper because they they there was a big scam, big scandal that they uh, they took all the data information from people's phones that that downloaded the Arrive Can app and uh, the they leaked it basically, and uh, yeah, people knew like that this you know. That there was a risk of them doing that like why can't we just file it by by paper right like it's it's pretty obvious once you know what they're up to it's pretty obvious uh what they're trying to do so a lot of people were like nope uh, i'm gonna do it by paper and knowing that they didn't do it by paper well they knew they were gonna um they were gonna have like a defense right So there's an eagle up there. You see it? Yeah. It's not clear now because of my zoom. But look. <laughs> Just watching over here. It's a pretty view. I'll show you. I'll show you what I can here. The bushes are covering it a little. But... So, let's see if I can get a view of the eagle from here. No, I think it flew away. It's pretty here, but it gets windy. the spice hut right here so I'm gonna go grab something to eat that mint uh, mint tikka chicken is so good like it's really good <laughs> it doesn't taste like mint but it's like green oh I don't know you would think it tastes like mint because it's like when you get it it's like a green piece of chicken but like the way they marinate it there's probably very little mint and they put other spices and it's really really good I ended up getting the beef korma. The chicken korma is really good. I haven't tried this yet, but we'll see how it is. And then a naan bread. Uh, the garlic naan is really good, uh, but I didn't get it this time. I think this is like flavorful enough. So yeah, but, yeah. This is the place here. It's really pretty. A lot of people will try to convince you that the charter. Uh, supersedes the bill but it doesn't because uh, in section 26 of the charter uh, it states that uh, we 
we basically have rights that are not part of the charter so that includes the Bill of Rights and those can be used so nothing supersedes the, I mean not, the charter doesn't supersede uh, the Bill of Rights for example